Dungeons. Zelda fans love them, Breath of the Wild fans seem to hate them. And yes, those are two different groups. For almost every Zelda game before Breath of the Wild, dungeons were the most important aspects of the games. While the worlds were never truly empty in any Zelda game, for the most part, the world served as a vessel that connected the dungeons and to house heart pieces. Maybe in Skyward Sword, you'd go to an island, kill an enemy, and get a heart piece. In Twilight Princess, you'd play the river game and get a heart piece. In Wind Waker, you'd go to an island, and get a heart piece. In Ocarina of Time, you find a secret hole where you get a heart piece. In Breath of the Wild, they flipped this convention on its head. The world became the main content and the heart pieces were connected to the bulk of the gameplay instead of rewards for venturing off the set path. During this change, however, the dungeons took a massive hit in not just quantity, but also quality. But as you know, Tears of the Kingdom would seek to correct this major shortcoming after a sea of complaints from 30-year-old Nintendo fans. People had a lot of expectations for the dungeons in Tears of the Kingdom, since for all intents and purposes, they were absent from its predecessor. And I have to say, Overall, they did a great job, but for me, out of all the Zelda games I've played, the best dungeon in Tears of the Kingdom is still worse than the worst dungeons in the pre-Breath of the Wild games. In all Zelda games, there are three main elements to the dungeons, the approach, the puzzles, and the boss. For most Zelda games before Tears of the Kingdom, including Breath of the Wild, the approach was a small section, which included either talking to an NPC or a small action sequence before the dungeon begins. Do the dungeon, then fight the boss. You probably heard 50 different YouTubers talk about how Breath of the Wild fails to adhere to this formula in an interesting way, so I'm not going to do it. I'm here to talk about Tears of the Kingdom, and Tears of the Kingdom also adheres to this formula of approach, puzzles, and boss, but this time around, the emphasis on the approach was considerably increased. Each region is struggling with their own phenomena, as the game calls it. The Gerudo are driven into hiding by zombie creatures, the Rito have their food supply cut off on their town and surrounding areas are plunged into ice age temperatures, the Zora are fighting off toxic sludge that's contaminating their water and by extension their very home, and the Gorons are all being converted into crack fiends, so they resort to scamming outsiders for easy cash. Reminds me of home. Fighting off the Gibdos from destroying Gerudo Town and discovering the secrets of the hidden temple was really fun, and felt like a seamless transition to the actual dungeon itself. Bouncing on the ship sails during the thousand year journey to the Wind Temple had me feeling like a kid again, and discovering the hidden Zora chamber underneath the domain was cool and atmospheric. And this ship was just badass. I'm also surprised this was the only dungeon located in the depths. These sequences are not just amusing, but they make each dungeon feel more connected to the world. When it comes to the approach, Tears of the Kingdom definitely has a leg up compared to the other installments. All right, dungeon time. The Lightning Temple is hands down the best temple in the game, and all the goats know that it's because of the inspiration it took from Wind Waker. From the moment you step into this temple, it feels like a temple. They nailed the atmosphere, even adding in traditional dungeon-like traps like pitfalls, rolling balls, and collapsing corridors. This might be called the Lightning Temple, but the puzzles focus on the first part of the word. This is where the Wind Waker inspiration I was talking about comes into play. The whole shtick of the Earth Temple and the Wind Waker was light-based puzzles. The Lightning Temple follows the same format. The light puzzles aren't nearly as complex as they could have been, but they were beyond serviceable in my opinion. Incorporating many of the unique elements from this game, while including callbacks to other series titles like Wind Waker and Ocarina. The other inspiration taken from Wind Waker is a companion character that's present and integral to the solutions of each puzzle. This is something that's shared between all the dungeons, not just this one, but I feel like this is a gameplay aspect that was kind of wasted in Tears of the Kingdom. And Wind Waker, Medley, and Makar are important for each and every puzzle, having them stand by on certain switches or using their unique abilities to traverse to parts of the dungeon you couldn't on your own really makes it feel like you're going through the dungeon with someone else. Tears of the Kingdom attempts to recapture this magic but falls short. It feels like the companion character just trails behind you and the only time they're really useful is for activating the replacement of Breath of the Wild's terminals. But even with this wasted potential, the Lightning Temple manages to present some pretty interesting ideas. And to end it off, we got Queen Gibdo. She may not be the most creative boss in the game, but she's the most difficult, at least out of the dungeon bosses. And you know I love a challenge. With the Wind Temple, it feels like they Frankensteined a bunch of shrine ideas together. All the other dungeons have unique elements only present in those areas, but the puzzles in the Wind Temple can all be solved making use of your base kit and no new knowledge. It feels very safe in a way. I have nothing really bad to say about it, and I have nothing especially good to say about it either. This was the second dungeon I did, and after I completed I kind of understood why the game was pushing so much for this to be your first dungeon. An advantage the Wind Temple has over the others though, is having the best damn boss in the game. When the chamber busts open and you get thrust into the air as Kogera comes bursting out the chamber, attacking you and Tulin as you soar through the sky, that shit is so... <clears throat> there was never a time during this boss fight where I felt even remotely threatened, but flying through the sky with Tulin and Kogera was fun as fuck. And don't even get me started when that remix part of the Dragon Roost Island theme started playing.
This fight was easy and took me less than five minutes, but boy was that a memorable five minutes. The Fire Temple to me is a hit or miss. I can see why people love it, and I can see why people hate it. I love the dungeon theme and messing around with the minecarts, but that's really all it has. The magic of the Fire Temple really comes from the exploration. The Fire Temple is an ancient Goron city, and looking at it through that lens, it's interesting to look at the areas around it, and most importantly, the temple itself as a piece of lore. But as a dungeon with puzzles and content, besides the slightly confusing minecart system, there's really nothing there. When you get to the blips on the map, it's as simple as just throwing Unobo into the gong. You could argue that getting to the gong is the puzzle in and of itself, but you could just choose not to engage with the puzzles like I did. Anytime I didn't see a clear way through, I kind of just forced my way through, and then I'd immediately understand what the intended solution was after looking at it from a different perspective. There were no aha moments or clever puzzle solving even when I solved the puzzles with the intended methods. The Goma fight was alright, but I don't think there's a single boss in this game that's outright bad. Going through the Fire Temple didn't feel dissimilar to exploring a random portion of the land. Honestly, I think the labyrinths have more depth than this dungeon. They especially have more depth than the Water Temple. I've saved the worst for last. I think this is the worst dungeon that exists in any Zelda game for the simple reason that there was not much content here at all. There's four puzzles total in this dungeon, one of which has nothing to do with water at all. Put a ball in a hole, drain the water, drain the water, and make a water wheel then fight the boss and it's over. Looking at my footage from when I walked into the temple to when I started the boss, 20 minutes passed, and majority of that time was spent running around in low gravity and not actually solving any puzzles. That is the most fun to be had with this temple, because the puzzles are so easy that they can't even really be considered puzzles. The boss is cute though, but even the boss is just kind of annoying. I don't know if that's because of how I feel about the temple, or if it actually is just meh. The water temple makes the divine beasts in Breath of the Wild look like triumphs. If I had to squeeze some praise out of my brain for this dungeon, it would be that this conductivity puzzle was kind of cool. Other than that, it's dog shit. They did my boy Sidon dirty and disrespected the memory of Mifa. While the dungeons in this game are marginally better than the temples in Breath of the Wild except the Water Temple, they still fall short of the original Zelda magic. There were elements I preferred from Tears of the Kingdom, but overall, I still prefer the more classic approach in dungeon design. Based on the reception of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, I don't expect them to go back to the original way of crafting Zelda game, but Tears of the Kingdom seemed to be heading in the right direction, adding more classic elements while keeping what made Breath of the Wild great. My disappointment with the dungeons doesn't impact my overall opinion on the game though because like I said at the beginning of the video, the dungeons aren't the main focus of the game, the exploration and the overworld are. And they did a phenomenal job with that despite the hardware limitations and despite the world taking place in the same map as its predecessor. I'd probably give this game a solid 8 out of 10 black man. It doesn't do everything I want it to but rarely does anything ever get to that level. And that completes my Tears of the Kingdom review trilogy. Let me know what you think of the dungeons in the comments below, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, take it easy. and. And as usual, have a good one.